now that we have our models created, let's go ahead and try to populate them with some data. So I'm going to start with the, the church's model here. And we can go ahead and run our console so that we can just populate it before we've got the web interface to do so. And uh, if you remember, there was the user.create method that we used to create users. And if I do this, it's going to um, complain because I haven't uh, populated some of the required categories like our email address and so forth. Uh, so we should have similarly a create method for a church. And so if we do this and we create a, a church, we get a very different kind of error. If we scroll all the way to the top, it says could not find table churches. You might be thinking, but wait, didn't we create those churches with, with our migrations? Let's go and, and check. If we look in our database directory, we can see there are uh, two databases, one that we use for development, which is what the console uses, and one that we have just uh, sitting around for testing so that they don't interact with each other. And we can directly run our SQL Lite, which is the database we're using by default here on that database, so our development SQL. And if we uh, go and say tables, notice that it's got a users table that we know about, uh, the locking examples table that we did, and this is uh, for Rails to be able to keep track of which migrations it's run and, and which ones it hasn't. But none of those other tables exist. Uh, and, and in fact, if we say sh show users, uh, let's try that again. Uh, sorry, schema users. It doesn't have the updated users table either. So none of, none of those work. And the reason why, of course, is because we haven't run our migrations. So we're going to do our uh, Rails uh, migrate. Sorry, Rick. Migrate. And that will tell Rails to create and update all these tables that we had told it to, to do before. Um, and also we want to rig test prepare because we want to make sure that our test database has the same setup, at least the same columns and so forth as our development database. And now if we go back into our console and we try to do a church.create, now it's going to actually give us a church. <laughs> It's not one that we really like because it doesn't have an, any information, it doesn't have a form key and so forth. So, so you can see that we have some fixes to do with our model to make sure that we, we have the right setup in place. Let's um, go ahead and um, church.find1, so now we go C dot um, name equals test church and um, description equals this is the test church and we can do user ID equals four and then um, we should have it, right? So if we now go see that user, it actually grabs from the database user4 and says, oh, that's the user associated with it. So we set the user ID to 4, and now we can use the user accessor rather than the user ID. So it does all the background querying to, to get that. So that's exactly what we we want there and we can go something like um, save this and we're good and notice it wrapped around that save 
a transaction. So we're doing exactly what we we want to, to have done. And now we're ready to start making sure that our, our models have the proper um, setup so that we can't store illegal or nonsensical data in them.